Hello everybody and welcome to episode 24. Today we're going to make a start on implementing enemies into the ARPG. Okay, we're going to begin that by creating a slime and eventually that slime enemy is going to wander around and um, aggro and attack the player if they get too close by doing a little jumping attack, okay? Um, there's quite a lot that goes into an enemy. We've got to create um, a state machine, like parent enemy, um, that uh, can uh, execute different behaviors and actions depending on its current state. And our slime is going to have a wander around state and attacking the enemies, uh, attacking the player state, a chasing the player state, a uh, being hurt by the player state, a dying state, and so on. There's quite a lot of behavior that's going to go into our enemies. So today we're going to start simple just by um, setting up the the setup for the enemy, okay? Uh, going to create that parent enemy object, and then we'll see how much time we have from there. If we have more time, maybe we'll create the uh, the the wander script um, to have the slime start of start wandering around. Otherwise, that might be episode 25. We'll see how it goes. So to start things off, I'm going to come to our macro script where we keep all of our constants, and I'm going to create a new enum for our enemy states, okay? Enum enemy state. Um, and it's going to contain the various different kinds of state um, an enemy can be in, such as idle, wander, chase, attack, hurt, die, wait. They don't need to equal anything specifically. Um, we just need them to be unique from one another. Okay, so this will be zero, this will be one, this will be two, and so on. Um, but a little bit more readable for us to write enemy state dot idle than it is to write zero for example, okay? Um, and easier to read enemy state dot wonder than it would be to read state equals one, okay? And you might um, reasonably wonder why we're using um, an enum for uh, differentiating between our different enemy states uh, when we didn't use an enum for our player states. And that's simply because uh, we're going to have multiple different types of enemy, okay? We're starting off with this slime, but we're also going to have a bat, and, you know, we want to be able to put different types of enemy into the game that still use this state machine, but might have different scripts they want to use for certain states. Some of them might have the same. They might have, like, you know, we'll write one simple wonder behavior, and that might be the same behavior uh, most of our enemies use. But every now and again, there'll be one that wants to use a different behavior and, and work a little bit differently, okay? Um, so by creating an enum, we can create um, a system that accounts for multiple different types of enemy. Okay, so let me just uh, make that a little bit bigger in case you weren't able to read that. Enemy state, idle, wonder, chase, attack, hurt, die, wait. No comma on the, the last entry, as always. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in the sprite for our slime that we're going to create. Okay, so I'm going to create sprite from images, or however you make sprites in the latest version of Game Maker. You, you know how to do that by now, right? And I'm going to come down, find in my assets um s slime strip for if you're using my assets um simple little bouncy slime sprite okay and that's just the the animation he uses when he's moving around when he's stationary um he'll just have this one and when he's moving he'll he'll do this little bounce well we're gonna slow that down a little let's put it to 10 frames per second that's about how we want it to look and i'm gonna make the origin uh bottom center on that and call it s slime Simple and close that. Next, we're going to create the root object for all of our different enemies. Um, so I'm going to go to objects, make a new object, and call this P enemy. Okay, P standing for parent. It's the parent object for all of our enemies. Um, but just because it is a parent object doesn't mean it can't have a parent. Um, so every enemy is also going to be an entity. Okay, um, that's very helpful for us in terms of, you know, uh, and giving it a hit script and you know associating it with all of these various different things that en um, different entities can have even makes it so you can have enemies that you can pick up if you wanted you know you could apply the entity um, uh, activation activate a liftable to an enemy and make it so you can lift up and throw enemies if you wanted to and so on lots of useful things to be gained there so we'll inherit all that behavior um, from uh, our entity. Um, but because this is an enemy, we're going to have a couple extra variable definitions that we're going to want to add. Um, quite a few actually, but for today, we're just going to set up a couple. Um, enemy wonder distance. 
there's going to be 32, and there's no, no promises that these will get used in this episode. I haven't really decided whether this is going to be one or two episodes yet, but um, we're going to set this up either way. This is assuming we're going to do um, the stuff where we make the slime actually move around, okay? So the enemy wander distance is going to be kind of, you know, if we plunk um, an enemy somewhere in one of our rooms, um, and it has a wander behavior, it can uh, wander to sort of a radius around itself, um, uh, but but stops it from straying too far from wherever you originally placed it, okay? So that's what that's going to decide. So uh, defaulting at 32, so by default we can go up to 32 pixels away from wherever we place it. Um, the next one is going to be enemy speed, which is, you know, just going to be how fast it moves. Um, simple as that. 0.75 is going to be our default. Our defaults are just going to be the same as the, the slime, alright? A slime is basically going to be our default enemy, if you will, for this game. And uh, let me just zoom in there on those, um, just so you can see what I wrote, because uh, it's tricky for me to keep doing editing and zooming in on the things I'm writing. Um, but anyway, that was enemy one dis distance, 32, enemy speed, 0.75, both of them reels in there, okay? Um, next up, I'm going to add the create event. You can see we already have a create event that we've inherited from pEntity. I'm going to add the create event and um, uh, first of all, inherit uh, the old one. So um, we'll just write event inherited at the start here. Uh, you can also do that, I think, just by right clicking on one of these. Yeah, if you just click inherit event, it'll create a new code window and automatically put this in for you. But you can also just make one and go event inherited. Okay, it's not um, gotten rid of the old parent event. Um, as long as we write that, it'll run all the code from pEntity as well. Okay, let's maximize this. That's nice and big. And let's set up um, all the different intrinsic variables we're going to need for our um, parent enemy object, okay? Um, in fact, that's what we'll call it, intrinsic variables. Um, state, first of all, is going to equal, um, I don't know what the default state should be for an enemy, I guess, enemy state dot idle. Right, um, wonder would be fine as well, I suppose. Um, H speed is going to equal zero. V speed is going to equal zero. Okay, it's going to allow us to move around. X two is going to equal X start, and Y two is going to equal Y start. And those variables are going to contain um, a destination that we're heading to if we have one. Uh, Dir is going to equal zero, which is just going to be our direction. Um, uh, useful for you know telling us what which facing sprite we want to use and that kind of thing. Um, enemy sprites. Um, so what we're going to do is for each enemy, um, so that they can share different um, behaviors, like different wonder behaviors and so on, uh, we want to put whatever sprites they're currently using into some variables. And that way the behavior can just say, now use your move sprite and now use your attack sprite and so on without having to know the exact sprite. Okay, so I'm going to write a uh, spr move equals, um, and our default is going to be our slime, so just s slime. And we'll have a whole bunch in here later, like a spr attack and so on. But for now, we just want the move one one. Um, enemy stats um, time past equals zero. I don't know why I call these. Stats, these are not really statistics for the enemy at all. Um, in fact, these can just, yes, I'm going to change that. Sorry, I'm just I'm going off script. Let's go back to our intrinsic variables and write, um, we'll write these in here instead. Time passed equals zero. Uh, wait duration equals 60 and wait equals zero. These are just variables that are going to allow us um, in different circumstances that you'll see as we go along to um, pass time, okay? They're just sort of manual alarms we're going to use um, in our wander state, for example. So um, we'll stand, the enemy will stand still, wait for this length of time, so 60 frames, one second, and then begin moving to a new spot, okay? That it'll pick at random. And we'll just kind of move around in a random way like that, okay? Um, time passed is going to be a safety check um, that we do if we if our enemy goes to move into a wall, 
um, so that it doesn't spend its whole life trying to get there because it's colliding with the wall and it's like, I can't reach the destination I'm supposed to get to. Um, we'll have this tick up and if it reaches a certain value, then we'll give up on trying to reach our destination. Okay. Yeah, I suppose enemy stats would have probably been referring to things that are now in the variable definitions window, like the wander distance and that kind of thing. Um, so it's just a, a leftover from not refactoring why that comment was still in my uh, my video script. Anyway, we don't need that at all. What we do need though is uh, enemy uh, scripts, okay? Or enemy functions, I guess, is what they really should be called now, but this is what I wrote when we're going with it, okay? <laughs> um, at time of making this video, scripts are still a thing uh, and still work as functions. Whereas, you know, I think in the future, hello, future people on YouTube, script now contains functions in the future, I think. I think that's where Game Maker is going. Um, so this should probably be called functions, but um, it still harkens back to a time that is the time I'm making this video where scripts and functions are the same thing. So that's why we're calling it scripts here. Uh, enemy script. Um, is going to be an array that we fill with our various different functions um, for the different behaviors for our different states, okay? So each, we're going to have one entry in this array for every enemy state. So enemy state dot idle uh, is going to equal minus one, and they're all just going to equal minus one in the parent object, um, and then we can check basically if we end up in a state that we don't have a script for, we can just not call it right um just to prevent anything breaking there um but i'm just going to paste this line about is it like eight how many do we have we have like one two three four we have seven of these okay one two three four five six seven okay um enemy stay wonder chase uh attack hurt uh die, and wait. And you can see we've got a lot of different behaviors that <laughs> we want to code into our enemy. Okay, so we don't actually have much more to do in our parent object. We just need to create the step event that will tell um, an enemy object to every frame, run whatever script it needs to run based on what its state is, okay? So based on what um, enemy state um, enum is in uh, in the state variable. We'll pick one of these. Um, in this case, you know, it's the idle, so it'll look in the idle one, see if it has a script, and if it does, run it. That's all we really need to do. So I'm going to um, add the step event to our enemy object, and we'll call this just execute state machine. Uh, if uh, not global dot game paused obviously we don't want to run these scripts while the game is paused if enemy script uh, open square bracket state does not equal minus one script execute uh, enemy script state okay oh and then of course you know we need to set the depth so depth equals a uh, negative view box bottom as our quick solution for making sure objects further um, lower down the screen show up in front of objects higher up the screen okay um, so that's all the setup really for a um, for our parent object um, we can now go ahead and make a child object of that um, that root object so I'm gonna make a new object I'm gonna call it o slime set the sprite to be uh, s slime um, mo mostly just so that we can identify it in the object tree because we're going to assign it sprites um, in the create event. Uh, go to parent, make it a child of um, p enemy. You might want to put these into uh, groups. Actually, in fact, let's do that. Let's add a group in here. Um, enemies, and we'll just put those into here. And I suppose that should go inside entities because they are entities. On the top, you can organize this however you would like. Okay. Um, so as you can see, we've made it a child of that, so it's inherited all of the um, the entity stuff and all of the enemy stuff. Uh, variable definitions, it's got all the entity variables and the enemy variables, and they're set to the defaults that we want, and we're good to go. Okay, so we have O slime. Let's add the, in fact, let's do it the other way. Let's right click on create in here and hit inherit event, so it'll just... Um, open a code window um, so we can override, but also inherit all of our parent stuff, okay? So inherit the parent event. 
and then um, we're gonna anything we write in here is then the however we want this object to be different from our root enemy object. Okay, um, we're gonna set the state to equal enemy state wonder. I think that's gonna be the default state for our slime. Um, enemy sprites. We're gonna set sprit move to equal s slime, and I know that's already set in a in our default p enemy, but you know we want to specify it for our slime, right? Um, in case we changed whatever the default is. Um, and enemy scripts or enemy functions, enemy script, uh, enemy state dot wonder is going to equal slime wonder, which is going to be uh, a new script or a new function, right? Um, and I think that's all. That's all we actually need for the slime, and then we just need to actually write the script that's going to make our slime wander around. Now we've only recorded 18 minutes of footage, so um, this is, was where I was going to cut it off, but I figure uh, we can probably go ahead and do um, the wander function in here as well. Um, so I'm going to make a new function called uh, slime wander, and this is going to be um, the the wander state for our slime. Okay, um, this is whatever behavior is going to carry it. It's going to carry out every single frame while we are in the wander state. The first thing I want to do in it is set sprite index to equal sprite move. All right, so just keep setting the sprite to whatever our movement sprite should be. In that, in, uh, in this case, it's just s slime. Okay. Um, you, you might think you know we've set that that sprite about three times in this. Okay, both in the parent object and the um, slime object, and now in this state. But obviously, we're setting it in here so that when we come back from other states, uh, the uh, the sprite gets set back accordingly, okay? Now we're going to have uh, two main sections in here. We're going to have, um, first of all, at uh, destination or given up, um, otherwise uh, move towards new destination, okay? So we're going to have a section where we check to see if we have already arrived or um, have given up on arriving at wherever we're moving to. Um, and if we have, you know, we begin the process of uh, selecting a new destination to move to. But if none of that is true, then we should just be moving towards wherever we're going, right? Okay, so if uh, uh, two open brackets there, x equals x2, close bracket, and y equals y2. Say so, so that this whole if statement assumes um, our x and y are exactly equal to our x2 and our y2. So wherever we're meaning to go, we have arrived. Okay, and you'll recall I set y2 and x2 to be x start and y start. So initially, this will be true when we first make the object. Okay, um, but that's not the only condition we want in here. I'm going to put an or. And that's two vertical pipes. Uh, time passed greater than uh, enemy wander distance uh, divided by enemy speed. Now, I suppose I haven't really tested it, but you could argue we could just have this um, instead of this condition. Um, this condition is what I put in to make sure that if we run into a wall and we don't actually get to this destination, um, we still pick a new place to go to uh, once an amount of time has passed that would be greater than how long it should have taken us, right? So if we, we take the wander distance, that's like the maximum distance we can go, and uh, divide it by the speed. So um, that, that, that in theory is like... In, in theory, this condition would become true whenever this one would become true anyway, is what I mean. Um, but this is just something I added on as a safety check for collisions, okay? I think it works either way. You can do it however you want. So if this is the case, it means we're either at the destination or we've given up on getting there, okay? Um, in which case, h speed is going to equal zero. V speed is going to equal zero. I know it can seem a little backwards the way we're doing this. We're kind of doing you know, this, uh, setting the speed to stop before we've actually done any of the movement, but the movement will come down here. Okay, um, So we'll set that to be zero. End our move animation. So if image index less than one, 
uh, image speed equals 0, 0.0 and image index equals 0. So if we're at the destination or we've given up and we're not moving, okay, uh, not only are we not moving, but I want to stop our sprite from animating. Not immediately though. The way the, the slime works is like doing this little animation like this. Um, I, don't, I don't really want it to go from here to just this and snap like that, okay? It's, it's got a little bouncy animation to it, so I think it makes sense that even when it arrives, it finishes off whatever its last bounce was, okay? So if it arrives on this frame, it would still go bloop, 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 and return to this, and then just not carry on animating, okay? So the way I've done that is saying if our image index is ever less than 1, so we're on this, whenever we are on this frame, um, and you know we're stopped because we're either at the destination or we've given up getting there. Um, set the speed of the animation to be zero and lock, just just lock our animation essentially. Okay, um, which will just stop the slime. And then um, if we're stopped, uh, eventually we want to set a new destination. So set new target destination, and we're going to do if plus plus weight greater than or equal to weight duration and you'll remember from the previous episode we explained how putting plus plus or minus minus in front of a variable works so we're going to add one to weight and then return weight which we know is zero um, and check to see if it's greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so we'll keep adding to that every single time that we're at the destination or we've given up and we're, we know we're stood still and then when weight uh, gets above weight duration, um, we're going to set weight back to zero and then set ourselves a new destination to move towards. Okay, so time passed is going to equal zero. Um, de equals uh, point direction x, y, uh, y uh, x start, y start plus i random range minus 45. Uh, 45. So this is what's going to stop us wandering too far. Whenever we pick a new destination, we essentially point ourselves in the direction of our um, original position and then just sort of vary it by 45 degrees either way. Um, so we're always just sort of like going back on ourselves in like a little right, um, loop, right? So we're always kind of kind of loop around a spot in a sort of semi-random way. Okay. Um, so once we've got that direction, we can set our new position to go to, which is going to be x2 equals x plus length the x enemy wander, oh, underscore, not minus, length the x enemy wander distance um, is the length and the is the direction. y2 is going to equal um, y plus length the y enemy wander distance is the length and the is the direction. Um, so that handles as being at the position we were trying to get to, which is what is initially true. So this is how we're going to start off, um, or having given up on getting um, to wherever we were going, which at the start, as I said, is nowhere. Um, we keep ourselves still, we have no move animation, and then uh, eventually we set a new target destination, um, and then those things will no longer be true. So we're going to do an else, and that's where we'll put this comment, move towards new destination. So by the time we've reached this else, we know we have an x2 and a y2 to get to, so it's time to actually get there. First of all, I'm going to write time passed plus plus. Um, so we'll keep adding one to time passed, and then eventually, you know, that will become true, and uh, we can give up on reaching the destination just in case, you know, we collide. Um, var distance to go is going to equal point distance x y x2 y2 okay so that's however far we've got to go um for speed this frame is going to equal enemy speed um if distance oh hang on sorry if underscore distance to go uh, is less than enemy speed then speed this frame oh, I've missed an under oh no i haven't okay uh, speed this frame equals underscore distance to go. So what we, what we do is we boil our speed that we want to move into a variable. And then the reason we do that is we're going to check to see if the amount of distance we need to go 
is less than our speed, um, basically checking to see if we're going to overshoot our destination. And if we are going to overshoot our destination, then we just set our speed to be whatever the distance is. And that's how we guarantee that we're going to like exactly arrive. Okay. We're also going to make sure, oh, actually I could have put this at the top image speed equals 1.0. Okay. We're going to make sure we're animating since we were locking our animation here. Um, the is going to equal point direction x, y, uh, x2, y2, because that's the direction we're going. Um, and the h speed is going to equal length the x um, speed this frame is the length and the is the direction. Okay, that's the x component um, that we're going to move. And then obviously v speed is going to be the y component. So length the y speed this frame the get our semicolons in there as well. And then if h speed does not equal zero, uh, image x x scale equals sine h speed. So to determine which way we actually want to face it, our, our slime is going to be simple. We're not going to have four directions for the slime. We're just going to have the one direction animation um, and we'll just flip it left and right because it looks reasonably okay moving up and down in just that same animation. Um, so we're just going to say if our speed is not, if our horizontal speed is not zero, um, then we'll just set our image X scale to be um, what, you know, whether our h speed is positive or negative. So if we're moving right, that'll be one. If we're moving left, that'll be minus one. Just flipping the sprite um, x direction based on whether we move left or right. Okay. Okay. So that's everything other than collisions, um, which we'll go over quite briefly because it's exactly the same spoilers as uh, how the player works. So I'm going to write collide uh, and move, although it's not going to be as long. So we're only going to worry about tile collisions for now because we just don't have any situations where we care about um, entity collisions with our enemies. Um, most of the time our NPCs are going to be pretty separate from our enemies just in this game we're making. Um, either way, you kind of know how to do that because it's, it's, spoilers, it's exactly the same way you do it for the player, okay? Um, but I'm going to write a new function here just in case, you know, we ever want to change anything. Um, so enemy tile collision, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Um, and we're going to make a new function called enemy tile collision. Okay. Um, and I will just paste it in. Um, that's what it looks like. It's literally, I'll, I'll just compare it for you. It's exactly the same. You'll recognize it here. Okay. So it's split up obviously because the entity sections are in here, but it's exactly the same. This chunk of code here, like if I copy that from player collision, go into enemy tile collision, I'll just paste that down here. You can see this and this exactly letter for letter the same okay so i've said var collision is false at the start here so that we can return true or false afterwards if we want to in slime wonder we're literally just calling it we don't really care if it's true or not because that's it's it's handled in here okay we checked uh, a pixel position on the tile map see if it's occupied if it is we snap to that side of that tile based on the direction we're going you know how this works we've explained it before okay we return collision at the end but as i say we we don't really care about it so we, we can just call it even though there is a return at the end there it just won't do anything with it if we wanted to we could write you know var uh collided equals um enemy tile collision in fact, I, I could leave that there, I suppose. I mean, it says, like, it, it's only referenced once, but maybe maybe we'll use that at some point in the future. I don't think we will. <laughs> um, but that will contain true or false, depending on whether we collide now. But my point is, you don't need it, okay? You can just leave it like this. Um, and it will work just fine, even though the script um, has the option to return the variable. Okay, now let's go ahead and place one of our slimes in the room and see what horrible thing I've forgotten to do and uh, work out why this doesn't work. So let's press F5. <laughs> um, no, the slime is moving around. It's having a little wander. It's doing okay. Can we get him to wander into a wall? That's a little non-obvious. He might be doing it, but it might be non-obvious. Let's move him down here. It might be easier to tell. 
Uh, no, he's, he's deciding to go every other way other than the wall. Go... There we go. Okay, you could see him go down, and he kind of slid along the bottom of the wall there for a second. Um, couldn't quite get to his destination, which will have been down here somewhere, but eventually just gave up on it. And it's now just moving around, okay? Uh, we can't, like, hit him or really do anything do anything else with him <laughs> at the moment. He's just, uh, just a little slime boy. Uh, but we've got the basics set up there, and then we're going to go ahead in our later episodes and make it so they react to being hit, so that they aggro and chase after the player and do all kinds of different things, okay? But that's going to have to wait. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, got quite a lot done there, a lot of important stuff. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks, guys. A huge shout out, as always, to all of the cool kids over at Patreon.com who are helping me make this series. We are now within $500 of my final goal on Patreon, which is making all these videos ad-free forever. So um, if that's of interest to you, maybe I'll be over to Patreon.com. I had to leave that up to you. Anyway, a huge shout out in particular and in no particular order to the following cool patrons. Bowser the Dog, Zephyr Flame, Max M, Robert Churches, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, Hyungjin, Relentless Rex, Do What Doobie, James Siggins, James L. Anderson, Jason, Dark Rider 0318, Hare, Rupinda, Rennie Dam, Sami and Yaya Legaglow, Mark Burgess, Scott Matthews, Leo, Joran Pater, Tyler Hubble, Cabbage Pants, Figgy, Zach Collett, John Harwood, Troy Mera, Goose, Alex Schenkel, Justin Adega, Carter Green, Flaming Ewoks, Kay the Ho, Andrew Gilbert, and Phil Keane. Thank you all so much for your support, thank you for watching, and I will catch you all next time.